all of you to Professor Tong RMC at Unimap sharing program today. Before we start, let us recite Umur Tengah Al-Fatiha. Okay, I have a few announcements here to all participants. Uh, kindly fill in the registration form as in your checks box. Okay. Okay. Uh, second, certificate of participation will be provided to all registered participants after this webinar. And lastly, during presentation, uh, we hope uh, everybody please turn off your microphone. Okay. Okay. So let me brief by you about our speaker. Our speaker today. Uh, Professor IRTS Dr. Muhammad Rizal Arshad is currently the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic and International at University of Malaysia Perlis, UNIMAP since December 2019. Well, he has been working at the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University of Malaysia, USM, starting from 8th of March 1919. He graduated from the University of Liverpool, United Kingdom in 1994 with a Bachelor of Engineering in Medical Electronics and Instrumentation. In 1995, he completed his Master in Electronic Control Engineering at the University of Salford, UK. In early 1999, he successfully completed his PhD degree in Electronic Engineering again from the University of Liverpool. He is currently the President of Malaysian Society for Automatic Control Engineers, MIS, past chair of IEEE Oceanic Engineering Society, OES Malaysia Chapter, and Executive Committee Member for IEM Marine Engineering and Naval Architecture Technical Division, MNATD. His research interests are in autonomous ocean robotics, swarm intelligence, and adaptive control approaches for real-world applications. So without further delay, I would like to call upon our speaker, Professor IRTS Dr. Muhammad Rizal Arshad, to deliver his speech entitled R&D for Ocean Applications, Opportunities and Challenges. Please welcome, Prof. Okay. Uh, yes, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon, uh, evening. Uh, to Dr. Rashidi and all of you uh, joining this uh, uh, sharing session uh, on R&D uh, for ocean application uh, opportunities and challenges. So I, I would I would just uh, be sharing some of my take on the opportunities available and uh, some issues uh, when you would try to do research and development or R&D projects related to the oceans. Okay. Before that, my uh, my background or relationship to ocean research is purely because uh, I'm my background is control system, but uh, on robotics, but for robotic application, uh, autonomous robotic, I choose, I've chosen ocean as the domain of application. And I'm going, I've been designing or doing R&D work on ocean robotics uh, for different depth, water depth and different duration of deployment. So that's why, that's where I go uh, uh, into the ocean application kind of uh, research. Uh, field. So probably uh, because of the nature of our, our university, probably uh, most of us when we talk about oceans, ocean application, probably uh, most of us uh, probably uh, do not see the opportunities, the abundance of opportunities in terms of research topic that is out there for ocean application. So I hope I can take some of, uh, some, uh, few, uh, some of your time to just share and I do not uh, plan to spend uh, too long about this, and maybe later when I covered my what I want to say, maybe we can discuss. Huh? Because uh, uh, I can see that if you go into uh, migrant or mosty kind of uh, domain of interest into ocean application, there are not many uh, researchers into that. Uh, only uh, only a few. Uh, you can basically identify only a number of. Uh, uh, researcher are doing real research related to the ocean, especially those are from the uh, biological or 
uh, physics uh, or purely marine science. That means they are not developing technology or they are not developing uh, engineering solutions or technology solutions for the ocean. They are basically using the current solution, but they are studying uh, some of the problems which are, uh, are are there in uh, related uh, uh, in the maritime uh, marine kind of domain uh, so they are just using technology so basically when we position ourselves for this ocean, uh, ocean application basically we are basically developing our my if i can just share my own experience how i come into the picture for an ocean application is i i'm providing the enabler or the enabling technology or solutions to the marine scientists so we are not doing as a engineer or technology we are not basically doing on our own, the research, the marine research, but we are now developing, we work with our counterparts from the marine science uh, lab or research group, and we provide the technology solutions for them. So when they write papers, we are part of the team. So they are doing the analysis, uh, they are telling us how deep they want to go, how long they want to deploy the system, but we provide the technology solutions. And I can tell you that, Technology solution or engineering solution for the ocean research are very expensive. It's very, it's, it's very expensive because almost all the uh, the tools uh, like sensors, uh, 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 probes, uh, all the uh, ocean going craft are bought from outside the country, from especially from the US, from Japan, now from China. But they are very expensive, and uh, so that there is a lack of researcher number of research working on the enabler the, so you have the you have the ocean you have the sea and you have the marine scientists but you do, they do not have the technology so they end up having to buy very expensive technology from abroad and there are not many local company or research research group who develop uh, sea based or ocean based sensors uh, so uh, so that's why it's a, it's a, there's a big opportunity for that. So I, I will now jump into my, that's my, basically my premise for my discussion. Huh? So I think if there's not, there's nobody from outside Malaysia, I can mix with Bahasa. Huh? So let me just, I want to share my slide. Hmm. Okay. Window. Let me share my slide. Okay, can you, can you see my slide? Yes? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 bro. Boleh, nampak? Ah, boleh, nampak. So, the slide ni ada banyak juga lah, tapi saya akan say go very far. Mungkin dalam half an hour, then we can discuss lah. Hopefully lah, hopefully lah. Cakap half an hour kan. Tapi we can yeah. cuba lagi. So, uh, so my background, uh, tajuk dah tahu lah, tajuk dah tahu, okay. So the idea the, the talk is to describe what are possible R&D uh, work topics for ocean related domains, uh, to discuss some of the potential of uh, ocean research, and to outline to outline to you some of the challenges uh, when we go about to do ocean related uh, projects. So potential application on the water robot robotics. I'm just sharing what's the potential of my field, which is ocean robotics, ataupun underwater robotics and sensors. Ah, uh. banyak lah. Contohnya untuk science area we we talk about sea floor mapping uh, macam masa MA370 kan dia banyak buat seabed mapping ah uh. those are using very expensive uh, uh, apa bathymetric ataupun sea floor sea floor mapping punya tools ah uh. uh, to develop that for our ocean uh, are very expensive sebenarnya tapi we, there are there are available technology lah now we talk about rapid response to oceanography and geothermal events um, macam kita mungkin so we don't have earthquake ke apa ke uh, underground apapun seabed punya volcano sebenarnya jadi kita punya risk rapid response ni contoh for tsunami tsunami alert system Ah, uh, so dia ada macam so kita kena ada technology solution for that how can we detect the occurrence of earthquake and tsunami as aftermath of the earthquake yang uh, moving towards our shore contohnya uh, so situ so we need some uh, some tools lah to do that then you talk about for scientific application you talk about geological sampling contohnya we want to measure the layers under Selat Melaka ni we want to study the layers what are the, there down there contohnya kan uh, so itu lah contoh-contoh for example macam scientific application lah then you talk about environmental application ada uh, lah banyak lah contoh 
you talk about long term monitoring of hydrocarbon spills I mean, the, the oil spill eh, bila tanker to subside at the oil spill uh, you want to study monitoring uh, this is the long term effect to environmental effect lah contoh macam kita kita banyak uh, mangroves eh, uh, bakau paya bakau so you talk about how how does this um, uh, catastrophe or this many uh, incident affect the uh, mangroves contohnya uh, radiation leakage pollution macam macam lah contoh selat melaka ni contohnya our melaka street is one of the most polluted lah because there so many tankers and what the tank, these tankers do is that they start to buang dia punya macam apa dia panggil sludge sludge with the tanker ni dia ada dia punya apa minyak mentah tu dia ada sludge buat tu so sludge ni it's not is is dia nak ada buang so what they did what they normally do is that they just throw it into the sea lah so it becomes a source of pollution hydrocarbon pollution lah they talk about environmental remediation after climate environment inspection underwater structures uh, there are many technology solutions required but now for example if you ins- inspect dams or in underwater structure what they do is they send human being uh, human diver to dive and to inspect visually and uh, the problem with that is that in terms of visibility normally our waters are very murky maksudnya the uh, apa ni uh, uh, this, uh, apa? the distance of uh, clear sight to a very short maybe one two meter then you can see anything because it's so murky yeah? uh, so there's a lot of issues uh, then you talk about military applications for ni lah for under ocean robotics uh, shallow mine uh, mine uh, apa ni? underwater mine uh, perlu api eh? uh, search and disposal then you talk about submarine on board sensors uh, detecting submarines uh, now uh, in the ocean they are not fighting on the surface they are fighting in the water so uh, under the water that means uh, so summary between submarines and uh, submerged uh, craft lah then you talk oil and gas applications uh, uh, so just looking from the underwater robotic and sensors well, there's so many applications so that's why when I started doing the research back in 2000 we did not have any competitors uh, there's nobody doing what we're doing so it's very easy to differentiate our research compared to the other robotic research group in Malaysia and not just in Malaysia uh, in Southeast Asia especially uh, I know there's only one or two group in uh, in Indonesia in Institute of Engineering Bandung and also Institute of Engineering Surabaya and there's another group in uh, NUS and NTU and then there's a one or two group in Thailand this because it's, it's so unique the application so you start to differentiate your research I think this is also an important uh, measurement of your research uh. Yeah, your research, our research must have clear differentiation and the ocean provide a lot of opportunity for us to differentiate our research compared to the, the other researcher within our, with the same expertise. Ah. Because in Malaysia now there are so many, or, or back in 2000, even in back in 2000, year 2000, about 20 years ago, there were many, there were already many robotic researchers but nobody, already most of them are focusing on industrial robot which is in the factories or mobile robot wheel robot this this basically nobody is looking from Malaysia perspective nobody is we research on the ocean robotics so that's why and even until now I think there's still a lot of many opportunities for ocean application ah. okay let me let me move forward then you talk about oil and gas of course oil and gas there's a lot if you talk to the uh, Petronas people Shell the for from robotic perspective, sensor perspective, research perspective, there are many things. It's just now I may not have enough time to do that. But uh, if I'm not holding any post, I would probably spend most of my time doing these things. Huh? And then you talk about other application for uh, robotics. Huh? This is purely for robotics and sensors. I just want to highlight sensors, huh? underwater sensors, uh, meaning I've worked with a uh, number of teams in USM. They are expertise on microelectromechanical system, which is on the, the, the uh, MEMS, MEMS uh, guys. Uh. So we develop uh, ocean sensors uh, and we design. So we managed to produce three PhD students designing acoustic uh, macro MEMS based sensors. And not on the application yet, just on the sensor design. So you talk about device and system. So in our, in for the ocean, you can work on both ways. You can work on the device side on the sensors or you can work on the system side okay okay for for robotics uh, we have seen uh, a migration uh, uh, evolution of research in ocean robotics uh, 
I remember when I started in 2020 years ago, we developed a lot of robotics uh, supervisory, then they start to go to unmanned, now they start to go to hybrids. And nowadays, uh, in current uh, research uh, for ocean related to robotics, we talk about swarm intelligence, use of AI for decision making, smart power generation and management, robot, robot sensor modules, uh, autonomous navigation, long-term deployment, meaning not long-term deployment mean when you talk about ocean, because the ocean are so wide, uh, it's so large, that mean we need to have to deploy a robot so we cannot just, uh, for example, you want to deploy a robot 20 kilometers away from the shore, okay? So you got two options. Either you have, you rent a ship and send your robot up 20 kilometers uh, from the shore and maybe do your experiment after maybe one, two days and you come back, or we design a robot that can you can send from the shore and it swims towards the 20 kilometer and do the measurement and stay there for maybe one month or two months. So it's a different uh, technology solution that we must provide in order to solve those same question, uh, research problems. Huh? So I'm saying that uh, basically whatever solution that you have now, uh, whatever solution that you have now, I do not know exactly what your research uh, work now, but I can see there's always the mirror, the mirror, the, the twin research topic for the ocean application. If you look carefully, uh, maybe for research, uh, energy harvesting, uh, there's an energy harvesting issue for ocean application. For new material, for example, there's there's also application for ocean application. So, like uh, for example, wireless communication network, which is very mature for land application, but it is very primitive for the ocean application. So there's a lot of opportunity for mobile wireless mobile communication researcher that is very they are very well versed with the ocean land terrain uh, land application, but it's very primitive yet for the ocean application. So. You can always migrate your domain to the ocean application. You can see a lot of a lot of research opportunities. And because Malaysia, Malaysia is considered a maritime nation. Uh, uh, Malaysia is be considered a maritime nation. Why? Because our land, uh, our sea area, marine area is much larger than our ocean area, our land area. I mean, our land, our marine uh, that is that is considered Malaysian waters are much larger than our land. So we are considered a maritime nation. Uh, but yet, uh, our technology for the research study for the ocean, uh, from the perspective of technology solution, engineering solution, are very limited. We we buy them from abroad, most of them. And But we have a very healthy marine scientific kind of community. But they do the science, but they do not have the tools. So they buy the tools. Huh? Uh, so. So this is an opportunity for us to come in as a technology engineering, technology researcher related uh, related to uh, this topic. So let me just go. I, I promise not to spend too long talking. Maybe we can discuss. So uh, uh, we know that seventy one percent of the Earth's surface are covered by ocean or by water. Lah. So that, that's why they say uh, as part of Earth needs should be called sea or ocean lah, sebab dia majority of the uh, surface of the earth, this planet are covered by water, water body, eh? so 71%. And less than 1% of the living space on earth is on land. Uh, less than 1% of the living space on earth is on land and the other 99% is in the ocean. Why? Because majority of the cities are near the shore. Majority of the city near the shore and not all the land are populated. And this is what it means. That means uh, in terms of uh, living spacing, majority are in the ocean because the oceans, uh, if you dry out, if you if we dry out the water, there's a lot of space. Uh, that's, so that's why they say in the future probably we're going to live in the ocean because the land will be uh, covered by water. And ocean water and ice make up 90% of all water on Earth. Uh, this is this is a, a very interesting fact. And ocean are home to innumerable species. Every square inch of the ocean is habitable. That means there's a, a phytoplankton, there's zooplankton, and all the food chain. Uh, some by the bigger fish like macam whales, but uh, some uh, start from the phytoplankton, zooplankton, and the, the, the uh, food chain to make getting bigger and bigger. Of course, on the top of the chain, you have sharks and uh, uh, that's bagaimana lah, okra, that's bagaimana. Okay. 
So according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, over 70% of the world's fish species are either fully exploited or this is, just a, this is just a statement. But the point is, there's a lot more out there because if you, if you study further, uh, we only, the fishing area are very limited to certain part of the uh, ocean. Or, or, and there's, there's a larger, there's many places yet to be uh, 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 discovered or explored even, even even in our waters in the South China Sea. So uh, many of, in 2008, with my team, we went on the fishery department on fish uh, mapping uh, uh, trip to Selat Melaka. There's a lot of many areas which have yet to be map and properly uh, study even in the Malacca Strait. Kalau tengok on the map tu nampak kecil je. Tapi there's a lot of area that needs to be studied. Eh? Okay, and more than 80% of all life is found, found beneath the waves. That means the, the, the oceans are very, uh, very, very, it's a very healthy kind of uh, ecosystem. And there's a lot of organisms, there's a lot of uh, species down there. And oceans creates over half of our oxygen. So, to join says cheetah belum the need to 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 highlight a point that if you want to do R and D with regard to the ocean application, we must have some basic understanding of the ecosystem of the ocean, how the ocean works, uh, how does wave happen, uh, how does the, how what is the impact of temperature on the uh, for example the current tidal current uh, wave etc and how depth and density affect our measurement. Uh, so we need to have an, a basic understanding of marine science so that we can appreciate even because we are developing the technology solutions for the marine scientists. Remember, because we as uh, from the engineering technology researcher, we are not basically going to do ocean research on our own as, as independently. We're going to be part of a bigger team. Uh, so this is a critical, that's why in order to do real ocean research, later research, we must first get uh, in uh, collaborate, get in contact and collaborate with our marine scientists. For example, in Malaysia, we have uh, many of them in UMT. We have them, some of them in even in UIT and Perlis. We have some uh, quite a number of them in UKM, uh, in Simlaya, etc. In UKM, so but. Uh, uh, one of the main major uh, uh, universities that do marine, uh, marine, pure marine science research in UMT, for example. So probably, like myself, I have my own contact in UMT because they have a problem that we provide the solution. So this is how you get involved with, with ocean-related uh, uh, research, uh, not uh, us providing solution without any real application. Okay, and I want to highlight that the average depth of the ocean is two miles or about 3,800 meters. So this is the average depth of the oceans. So the oceans are very deep and very, it's really unexplored. So if you can see this picture, they are the basal, uh, kita dengan, uh, we are on the continental shelf. Continental shelf because we are on the continental shelf and our average water depth is about 200 meters. It's not that deep actually. In fact, uh, the average depth of Selat Melaka is around, around, around not more than 50 meter, the average depth. Uh, I think the deepest may be around 80 meter, and the rest are very shallow, especially, especially near the shore. Uh, but, and then you have the continental slope, then you have the continental rise, the ocean basin, and uh, the deepest water will be around 11 kilometer, which is now the record is in the Mariana Trench. Uh, this is, so you have the sea and you have the ocean. So the sea is normally the uh, normally on the continental shelf we call it the sea yeah. sea for example south china sea uh, java sea uh, but those are deeper we call it ocean uh, because it's it's very deep yeah, it's deep it's deeper than uh, 1000 meter normally uh, so this is just a general so that means for each each different depth me there are the different challenges uh, because as you go deeper if you're designing a tools, uh, it the pressure becomes higher, and you can see that as you go deeper, sunlight penetration uh, is getting darker and darker. darker uh, basically, uh, in Selat Melaka, I think if you go more than 70 meter, it's tot uh, 80 meter, then it's total darkness. You cannot see anything because the water cannot penetrate anymore. If you go to the open water, probably maybe uh, like our waters again, 50, 60 meter, uh, then it start to uh, it's going to be deep, uh, darker and darker, and then it's pitch black. Huh? 
because if 1000 meter is total uh, darkness that uh, you can't see anything because uh, light cannot penetrate so imagine if you want to uh, explore that that kind of water depth you need the technology yeah so i'm, I'm just giving uh much uh, advocating this idea of us uh, uh, putting ourselves forward to provide the technology solution engineering and technology solution for the marine scientists for ocean education because uh, unless we have already have a uh, uh, understanding of marine science probably we can do a study on the on the directly on our own i'll give you an example like a study on mangrove you uh, like i think one of the university in the plum valley they got a project to to monitor the mangroves uh, they, then they use the iot so this uh, we can do that i think unimap our our research can do that it's not that difficult but the, the most the most uh, the second part is most difficult. what do you do with the data uh, so you need a marine you need this uh, marine scientist or biological scientist to inform you what kind of data and how you do the analysis uh. so this is where uh, our our expertise stops uh, and you need somebody else to make sense of the data so that's why you when we approach a uh, ocean or marine related research, uh, research we must work in collaboration with the marine scientists or the biological or the physical uh, scientists uh, we can't do it on our own but they can do it how they they solve their problem they buy it from outside uh, from the third party so this is the opportunity that we can uh, try to get now uh. okay so 50 percent of the world population lives within i uh, think this, this is another thing because because of a, a majority of the population of the world live near the shore they do not live inland too much inland so you got uh, we got a lot of problem uh, that we can study in terms of the interaction between uh, human uh, habitation and also ocean organism uh, where they live uh, the, the 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 boundary layer for example in terms of uh, acoustic noise between human activities and the health of the marine species so there's a lot of if you are a marine scientist and there's a lot of uh, things that you can you can study, but you know the youth for the marine side to study, we can we need to provide the solution. We need to get the data for them. So this is again I highlighted again. This is why we can come into the picture. Okay, then uh, every day there's a um, mishap or accident with oil rigs, seepage, seepage mean leaking, discharge from ships, uh, chemical runoff from land sources. It says uh, about 50 million gallons of oil entering the North American Ocean every year. Uh, so basically, it's about 4,500 swim, residential swim, maknanya banyak lah, banyak this chemical pollution. So how do we, as uh, engineers and related uh, the engineering technology research uh, fraternity or groups, how do we work with the marine scientists or biological or environmental scientists to study this? Uh, so this is where we come to. And okay. So basically, uh, marine science, if I just can recap, uh, study of the ocean, ecosystem, and life forms. Uh, so this is called oceanography. Uh, and marine science consists of four branches of oceanography. I, I think I need to share this because then we can appreciate when we talk to the marine scientists, we can now ask them which branch of the marine science that they are doing. So you got the, uh, so basically, marine science. There are four branches of oceanography. You got the biological oceanography, which is the marine biology study about the fish, uh, different organs like the the crabs, etc. Then you got the chemical oceanography. You got the geological oceanography, and you got the physical uh, uh, oceanography. Uh, so these are so uh, example biological is the fish. Uh, chemical is a chemical uh, interaction and uh, components. Uh, geological is the uh, uh, geography of the seabed, uh, shift, tectonic shift, then you've got the physical oceanography about the measurement of the temperature, the density, uh, so these are different branches of oceanography. And for the marine science, marine science uh, scientific community, these are the four uh, branches that they need, tools, they need engineering solution, technology solutions, and this is where we can come into the picture. I'll give you an example, a physical oceanography study. You've got the salinity of the water, right? The salinity, this salinity of the water uh, is if you, if our ships, for example, are built from steel or some metal, uh, it is uh, prone to corrosion, right? It's corrosion. So, and when you use it on the in the open sea, open ocean, because and it stays there for too long, 
the corrosion, eh? the, the interaction between the steel metal and also the water, there's a lot of corrosion happen. So, uh, so I was one approach, once approached by this uh, company. He, uh, she, he, uh, he asked me whether I can design, uh, I can create a marine, uh, a paint, uh, anti biofouling paint, so that they can paint the uh, body of the ship so that uh, it, it lessens uh, the rate of corrosion of the body. So this kind of anti fouling paint is not new, it's there out there, but he, he came to me whether I can come up with a new, uh, much better, but this is not my field, so I, I do not know how to mix uh, paint. Eh? Uh, element in order to produce an anti bio fouling. Anti bio fouling means uh, you, uh, a, a surface which will uh, uh, resist the forming of uh, organism on the surface. So, it, it, so that is anti bio fouling. So, if you have a paint. So, this is an example where you need people from the material side, from the nano type, nano type, type side, to come up with a paint which, which has this property of anti bio fouling, which is I know the problem, but I do not have the solution because it's not my field. So anyway, this is an example of one small uh, topic, uh, not once, one, one, not one small, it's a big topic, but one topic related to phys physical oceanography. When, we, when people talk about geological oceanography, they talk about mapping. How do you map the seabed uh, or the seabed uh, down there? Which, because I, I told you, remember I told you that See, uh, sunlight cannot penetrate more than 50, 60 meters, so it's total darkness. You cannot see it. So because you cannot see it, you need another tools in order to map the seabed. So you need to know the map of the seabed so that you know uh, the contour, uh, how that will affect the current flow. Uh, so this is, uh, they need tools uh, to do that. Okay? And then, uh, let me spend for a few minutes then you have branches oceanography uh, but, uh this is what we call it uh, biological what is biological oceanography uh, chemical oceanography uh, geological oceanography and also uh, physical oceanography uh, study of the physics within the marine environment so from these four and it can get the branch uh, into different kind of application which i've showed earlier so it, it you need to study this some of these uh, combination, combination of this uh, research domain in order to provide solution of the earlier slides that I gave you. So that means the solutions need to be able to address some of the issues. For example, I'll give you an example of research issues, uh, research, not research issues, are some of the problems that they have once been posed, uh, been asked. For example, they want to build uh, a jetty in Tioman Island. They want to build a jetty in Tioman Island, a new jetty, yeah that will encroach into the coral areas, right? So when you want to be a jetty, you need to do piling, yeah? You need to do piling to pile the poles, huh? So when you want to, want to pile the poles, they want to understand, see how, what is the acoustic noise level when you pile it, but there's a lot of coral reef. Coral reef is where the fish breeds, huh? Ikan tu, the betelo, the hidup, anak ikan, so on. Jadi bila kita pile very noise, uh, do a lot of piling, that will introduce a lot of noise, acoustic noise to the to the coral areas. Huh? So they need they want people to study what is the level, etc. And what level is uh, permissible, what level is not permissible. That is not. So I can I can develop the tools uh, in order to measure the acoustic signal, the dB, decibel, etc. But I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to decide whether it's okay or not to the fish colony. So you need a marine science marine scientist huh, to do to give your his or her feedback to you. So this is, I said, the example of where we can provide social with that we cannot go on our own and we need to get the end user perspective so that we develop a technology solution that is just optimum for that, for his or her requirements, huh? okay? So marine science uh, draws on the physical science, life science, earth and space science. Huh? Uh, so this is, this is what we need. So in order for us to do ocean application, eh, so R&D, real R&D that produce real impact factor publication, we need to work with the guys uh, from the marine scientists so that they can, we can help them to find the solution and we can be part of the team that uh, that uh, enable the solution to, to, to be found now, okay? Okay, uh, uh, so, this is, uh, this, uh, this is, so this is about marine scientists, but from the engineering technology perspective, we also need uh, some uh, quite uh, approximate kind of formal education. We need some uh, some 
exposure also a little bit in deep in depth exposure also to the to the field so that we can now know where where uh, we can basically uh, play a role okay this is again some of the statistics so if i can just uh, uh, to can i can just go, go forward so you can see here so this is uh, the opportunities uh, that is that 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 there is abundance uh, um, kat luar tu banyak tentang laut then if you google the opportunities for collaboration for ocean research there are so many there are so many from the european from the us NOAA, NOAA, n o a a the uh, uh, north american punya oceanographic agency from japan from china from korea there are so many opportunity for uh, ocean related research collaboration it's just from my my group or my own personal perspective i can only contribute uh, uh, strongly on the robotic side, on the tools development side, sensor side, but there are many study on uh, new sensors, new material, etc. So I, I guess uh, energy harvesting, there's so many. So probably I would I would strongly suggest uh, for you to explore this and expand your application, not just looking at the land application, but also uh for expanding your horizon to the ocean application there's so many uh, so it's we don't have time to share everything uh, this evening lah, of course huh? so you can see here uh malaysia uh, you can see malaysia on the right hand corner on the middle on the right hand corner right right hand of the indian ocean slightly on the uh eastern side of the indian ocean you can see uh, malaysia so we can see the south china sea which is a protected uh sea area and very shallow water and the deepest water if you can if you can like like see off the coast of Sabah which I'm just off of KK you know where's KK right that of the that that water is the deepest formulation water it's about 2.6 2.7 kilometer that's the deepest for our water and there's a lot of opportunity for research there and I don't think we have yet the tools or technology to do research at the seabed, uh, at, the, at, the, at the bottom of the 2.7 kilometer water depth. Uh. So you can see this, the huge water column. Water column means the uh, marine area and there's a huge uh, opportunity for us to, in terms of to work on so many topics. On, for example, on transport study, uh, shipping lanes, uh, on communication, on new material, on uh, Trans, uh, the transatlantic or trans, uh, yeah, transatlantic uh, uh, species invasion. Contoh, huh? uh, if you look at the map, you have a ship from, let's say, from Argentina, uh, south of uh, south of the South American uh, continent, south there, and, and from the Falkland Islands, for example, it, the ship uh, there's a different species there, uh, and this uh, ship will basically menumpang lah pada kapal tu, and as it moves into our ocean that species will uh, invade the area in our waters. Also, for marine scientists, there's a big topic on that, the marine uh, species invasion uh, due to this ship uh, uh, moving from one point of the ocean to the others. So, so uh, I think uh, for, for us, oh, when we talk about R&D uh, uh, for ocean application, memang banyak, banyak opportunities lah. Macam saya kata, tunjuk contoh-contoh di tadi, yang awal tadi. But the challenges is for us to be able first to uh, to to work with the, with the right problems because we need to get the strong team that can work with the right problem in our country in Malaysia or not if or if not we can collaborate with our partners from Indonesia even from Japan uh, I'm collaborating a few years back we are with a team from Japan etc from from Indonesia to work on a, on a problem so this is a trans uh, boundary kind of collaborations okay so uh, uh, I think uh, this is very detailed but uh, if you can see here uh, is the point is, is, it is very interdisciplinary kind of in nature. For ocean application, you must work uh, as a, as a I, I, I don't think I can see any real research group that works on ocean application that work independently. That means the marine scientists independently, they always work with the other domains. Uh, then you can produce a very good research uh, work and research uh, output. Okay, so, um, so if I can just, uh, Okay, these are examples 
uh, robotic platform that people are working on. Uh, this is in Southampton University. I, I will start within, let's say, five minutes, then I can I can discuss. Uh, if you have any question to me and any ideas, uh, how we can move uh, Unimap also your research uh, to relate it to ocean application. So this is an example. If you can see on the slide, these are example of different kind of robotic platform that uh, the UK has. This is from National Geographic Center in the in Southampton. I've been there. I've been uh, on not been on the big ship, but I've been I've seen the lab. I've been I've been into the lab where you have this all this very uh, interesting stuff. Very expensive also, but this is this is what we call uh, autonomous robotic underwater robotic, where they can send this small. You see the the the, the like uh, there's a small torpedo shape uh, yellow the small one, and these are what we call underwater gliders. It can be you can they can live it in the ocean for three up to five months without having to retreat, and this thing will get the information, get the sea temperature, uh, current etc. So this will allow them to make a lot of decision. Uh, in terms of uh, the marine scientists to, to, to do a lot of decision for for many applications, uh, even for uh, defense application. And then uh, you have this, this is an example of different unmanned surface vessel. Uh, you can see a different, this is the evolution of it. So now, for example, if you uh, look at the bottom uh, part of the slide, you see the boat. Uh, this is an unmanned boat. So this boat, uh, now are being used in order to ma to monitor the mar mar marine ter uh, uh, borders and without having human being on it, so they control it from land. So this is a solutions that uh, will also help uh, uh, the apa ni help untuk monitor our borders, marine borders, for example. They, they interested sikit kalau marine borders and so they don't have any markers. Uh, kalau macam land borders, you have the stones, you have the hills, you have the mountains, and but sea border you have nothing. They have to have. That's why uh, sometimes you read the news like uh, uh, our fishermen are captured by Indonesian authorities, our Indonesian fishermen are captured by Indonesian authorities because their punya boundaries are always changing. Depending, they use a satellite. It's not. It's not fixed. Uh, that's why. That's why you, if you have an autonomous some system, this will help our authorities as well. Uh, to 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 so my point is, uh, from the physical oceanography point of view, you talk about developing tools for measurement and observations. Uh. So there are many, there are many needs. There are many. Uh, I've been getting uh, many uh, research problem related to ocean, but the problem is uh, the solution may not be that so forth, and you need a lot of money to develop the prototype, etc. But the point is, it talks about uh, data gathering. Uh. Uh, to measure some parameters and to measure the parameters over time. That means to do observation. So you, you can do measurement uh, one time stamp, but you can also do the measurement over a span of time. And that means observation. So this needs a different technology solution, engineering solution, and it needs a way of how do you model the behavior. Uh, so this is quite interesting. So these are example applications uh, for uh, potential research uh, a topic. Uh, Met ocean means uh, a tools of measuring the physical uh, part of the ocean, the temperature, salinity, density of the water. We talk about acoustic monitoring, surveillance, marine survey, water quality management, combination get with marine life monitoring. For example, um, in Perlis, uh, we were told that there were some dolphins, tapi uh, dan but it's not easy to see it. But if you use acoustic headphones, we can now listen to the incoming dolphins. You can now know that the dolphin is coming. But now we are not using the technology. We are just using the visual way of measure, uh, looking or finding the dolphins. The contoh lah, marine for marine life monitoring. There are so many applications and modeling uh, because the the sea are very complex. You 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 realize that the modeling part people from the AI community from the system identification community research group can also come in in order to model very complex interaction in the ocean. So I think, uh, uh, and and this give uh, uh, this uh, hops or Harvard Ocean Registration gives a very interesting uh, way how uh, uh, people try to model the ocean behavior or ocean interactions using uh, different kind of model, mathematical models, simulated models, etc. Because one, we understood we can basically predict if we, we measure some parameters today, what 
how will the ocean behave one week from now, one month from now. So this is issues normally tackled by marine scientists, uh, uh, climatologists, etc. But we can provide the technology and giving solutions. Okay. So, so I think there's there's a number 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 of things I can talk of. But I just want to again uh, uh, highlight if you if you talk about our oceans, so you can see this this is our ocean. You can see we are considered uh, peripheral seas. Uh, we are protected seas. Uh, we are shallow water. We are on the continental continental shelf. And yet in our waters, the South China Sea. Uh, within our Malaysian water, there's still yet uh, very limited research work. Huh? So, from my perspective, um, uh, I'm very excited. If, if I'm very welcome, I would welcome uh, you to, to explore this opportunity. As I said, whatever you've done on land, for a land, land application, you can always find the mirror application for the ocean or for the sea. And this is where you need to talk to your to our counterparts, the marine scientists and the oceanographers, in you know, order for them to relate to us some of the real problem they are having, okay? Which needs a real technology solution. So I think to quote uh, Dr. Rashidi, so I, I'm sharing the, I would say the ocean provides huge research opportunities and resources. Uh, R&D for ocean application can be linked to so many socio-economic activities. Normally, uh, what we need is normally our baseline studies. Uh, these baseline studies uh, using real data and accurate modeling are needed to understand the impact of the oceans. and impact of the ocean to us and of us to the ocean, okay, to the sea. And tools for the technology analysis and knowledge extraction are actually needed for such a complex system. So I can see people from mathematical, those who are good in simulation, uh, developing simulation uh, tools uh, will be, modeling tools will be, will be can see the, 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 where they can fit in. And most R&D for ocean mission are need a robust setup. So, so another challenging, a big challenge for ocean research is when you want when you want to test your system. And this this is where it's going to be very expensive because developing tools in the labs is okay, but once you're going to go, you need to go out, out to the ocean and stay, let's say on the ship for let's say a week and to test it. And this is a uh, quite interesting because sometimes because of the the way uh, the physical constraint, sometimes it works in your lab, but it doesn't work in the in the real uh, application. So these are the challenges. Uh. And I would say almost all R&D for oceans are integrated and multidisciplinary in nature. Uh, because I think nowadays it is, it is to our advantage is if you work in a team rather than on our own. Because uh, we should start from the problem perspective and come up with solution rather than having a solution and trying to find who wants to use our solution. Because that doesn't work anymore today. You need to talk to the end user, ask the problem, was, that they're having and you work backward to find the solution. Then you have a fit in, fit between your solution and the real world problem. So uh, I think the opportunities are in abundance, but I would say it's very challenging, whichever topics that you choose. So uh, I think uh, that's about it. I hope you, you, uh, I hope you guys have uh, gained, gained something. Uh. So kalau ada soalan, I think Dr. Rashidi, I, uh, thank you very much. I uh, pass back to Dr. Rashidi. Thank you. Okay, Prof. Thank you, Prof, for a very impressive uh, presentation, Prof. Okay, so, <coughs> any question uh, from the participants to Prof, if any? Uh, Assalamualaikum, Prof. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, Halim, I'm Dr. Tronik. Hey, sorry. Pakai Pakai member punya, Hazriza. Halim, Halim. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Silakan. Apa nak tanya? Dulu, uh, Prof dah cakap pasal signal tu. Uh, uh, macam mana sekarang kita dah ada di atas 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 land lah. So uh, how is the signal in the in the oceans? So okay. what what the comments? Yeah. Okay okay. That's why I mentioned in my talk that if you I thought I I think the wireless community network online are very mature. That means they still have the upper uh, three G, four G, five G, upper upper lagi satu long evolution punya ni kan uh, LTE LTE LTE. Macam lah. Yeah, yeah. But 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 uh, in the water, because of the medium, uh, 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 EF or electromagnetic wave or transverse wave cannot cannot uh, transfer uh, cannot uh, travel very far, so it get absorbed. It get absorbed by the medium. So that's why uh, the deeper the deepest the the, the 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 not the deepest. I mean the longest uh, that I've seen that I've seen uh, that I've read upon in the literature is hundred meter for RF. 
for using RF radio frequency. Whereas uh, that's why in the water, in water, the best communication module, module uh, medium is uh, they use acoustic because acoustic is a uh, longitudinal wave. It's mechanic. That's too, we know in the in the world there's transversal wave, longitudinal wave. It's uh, EF uh, e, uh, electromagnetic wave and also mechanical wave. So uh, acoustic because it's mechanical, it is not affected by absorption. It is affected, but it's not as affected by absorption compared to the electromagnetic wave. So that's why uh, a natural uh, nature natural organism like dolphin, whales, ikan ikan ni dia guna sound dia tak guna air. Dia guna RF logik kan. Tapi dia guna sound lah itu Allah Tuhan cipta kan. Dia guna sound sebab sound can travel very far. That's why the lower the frequency like macam whales kan, ikan paus. Dia ada, dia panggil uh, deep water conversion channel about, it's about, I think about 500 meter water depth. Dia boleh trans travel at 2 hertz of signal, sound dia boleh travel up to 1000 kilometer because of the, because of the uh, behavior or nature of the signal type. So to answer your question, memang uh, there's a, a, a lot of opportunity, a big research area for RF deployment in marine environment. As of today, uh, uh, you need a very specialized antenna for transmitter and receiver, bulk antenna. But even that, the solution, the distance are very short. Uh, you must you narrow band lah. You cannot send like video. You will send string data, but you cannot send video because it's wide band. So, so my uh, to answer your question is a is a very primitive uh, topic yet for ocean application. And uh, but slightly mature is acoustic, macam submarines semua guna acoustic. Tapi because acoustic are located in a wave, it is prone to noise. That's why it's, it's very noisy for acoustic. Uh, we listen to a real acoustic uh, signal, it's very noisy. You need a lot of signal processing to get the good signal lah. Uh, to answer calon jawab pendek sebenarnya banyak peluang lah. Orang tak boleh buat sebab the signal get uh, easily absorbed. The higher the frequency, the shorter the transmis transmission depth, trans uh, transmission apa, penetration uh, distance for the signal. Jawab soalan ke? Eh? Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Ah, Cuma yang baru ni ada laser tu kan? Ah, laser lain. Laser, dia EM tapi laser ni optik. Optik ni dia, dia, they are very affected by suspended particles. Oh, but laser dia guna for deep water because deep water there's no suspended particles. Why why there's less suspended particles in deep water? Because sunlight cannot penetrate the area. Bila sunlight cannot penetrate cannot penetrate the area, dia tak ada there's not much uh, living organism. So plankton, phytoplankton tak banyak. This phytoplankton ni dia suspended because of the availability of sunlight. So the shallow the water the higher the assistance of sunlight, the bigger the population of phytoplankton. You cannot use laser because the reflectance, light reflectance from the sun, like the bula, the suspended particles so can reflect the lights. Tapi kalau deep water, they use optics, uh, laser, blue laser, green laser normally. Tapi itu pun tak jauh. Maybe uh, I think about 30, maximum be 100 meter juga. They tak boleh go very far because of the, because of the, apa ni? Uh, itulah isu tadi lah isu isu dan uh, isu of the sasa particles of the panggil refractivity index lah satu lagi is because uh, you nak check mana kalau real uh, socioeconomic punya area normally shallow water not the deep water normally deep water ni orang nak berperang je macam submarine sebenarnya boleh eh? ok ok bro ha, ha, okay, okay, okay. tapi kalau nak kalau nak buat betul-betul kena belajar skubah lah <laughs> ambil lesen dah eh bro. Lesen kena ambil lesen. Ha uh, okey, tapi boleh saya belajar ni. Okey okey. Ada soalan? Ada, ada soalan ya? Bro, maybe saya ada satu soalan bro. Boleh? Uh, macam uh, kita ada di Unimap ni ada beberapa group yang buat on sensor ah. Kita kata sensor uh, robot, robotik and so on bro, bro kan. Yeah. So maybe Prof can advise them ah for those who are work on sensor ni uh, mm. where they where they want to first I mean, for if, example they want to start for ocean research kan? Uh, uh, which which part they need to study first Prof? Maksudnya uh, how, macam mana phase 
okay. for initial uh, research oh, yang boleh start tu. Okay, dia dia sensor. Contoh contoh saya bagi contoh macam you develop. Okay, saya saya ambil contoh saya pernah buat saya dengan tim saya pernah buat untuk MEMS based pressure sensor. MEMS based pressure sensor. Uh, pressure sensor ni kita guna untuk land application macam uh, apa ni? Uh, apa ni dekat kereta tu? Uh, apa? Uh, apa nak sebut ni? Apa yang uh, oh. yang angin apa ni? Hydraulic pressure. Uh, pressure sensor kan bila kita ada ini uh, apa oh, ni? airbag, airbag Air, airbag lah tak keluar, tak keluar petang ni airbag, airbag tu kan keluar kan airbag yeah, tu yeah. pressure sensor ok the same pressure sensor if you want to use for ocean application you must study the interaction between uh, saline water to the surface of the pressure sensor ah uh, dia punya interaction tu itu kena ada chemistry study some uh, study of material interaction because Uh, saline water are very uh, salt water lah, they very corrosive apa tu, some pressure sensor ni, they dive, I give example macam saya faham, contoh dive, they normally pressure sensor are diaphragm based, diaphragm, maknanya dia based on pressure kan, diaphragm, tapi diaphragm ni dia flexible surface tau so bila you ada corrosive material interact with the diaphragm dia akan change the flexibility of the surface, uh, you can study ya sensor tu so there's a lot So you uh, the same presenter you nak use in water, they require further study because you nak study the 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 salt what salt layer yang akan berada di permukaan the, the diaphragm. Contoh lah, contoh. Dan tapi maksud saya, uh, I I saw my my student uh, yang buat tu dia banyak buat experiments lah. How do you study the interaction, the effect of the interaction of the uh, environment to the to the to the apa ni to the sensor dia ada chemical sensor pressure kalau dalam laut ni bila you uh, test dekat satu meter of, one meter of water depth dia tak ada masalah sebab pressure dengan atmosphere uh, tak beza tapi kalau you go 10 meter 20 meter 100 meter dia the pressure towards the cavity dalam sensor tu increase tremendously so kalau you tak buat you punya protection enclosure properly your sensor will break lah so I'm saying is that dia bukan, bila you buat sensor for the ocean, bukan maksud you kena study from zero, tapi you kena study macam mana you nak adapt your sensor for ocean application ada banyak sensor ni macam ocean application contoh apa, for fishery for fishing uh, for contohnya kadang-kadang kita, uh, contoh I, 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 contoh, do you know that fish vocalize, ikan ni dia keluar suara, dia bukan cakap macam kita pasal dia dia boleh ada dia ada suara, uh, bunyi yang identify contoh ikan kelama dia ada certain bunyi uh, dolphin dia ada certain bunyi bunyi from dia punya activity lah so contoh kita nak tangkap ikan kelama lah contoh kan uh, in this area we want to know banyak tak population tu we can use acoustic sensors to know uh, contoh lah so maksudnya kalau you know the application which we must talk to the stakeholders and we have the land solution the problem now how to do you Marinize, ha, bukan marinize macam barbecue tu Marinize maksudnya how you make it uh, suitable for marine application ha, This is the research, this is an interesting research uh, solution problem lah Macam mana you nak fit your So bila kata ocean application ni Bukan makna kita start from zero Kita tak, kita guna je whatever land solution Macam mana nak guna it for ocean marine solution ha, Itu challenge je Kalau boleh buat tu, okey lah Macam tu lah boleh eh? Boleh boleh Prof. Okey. Ada question ni? Ada any uh, any question? Tak ada. Boleh ke Prof? Ah okey. From Sabah. Okey Prof, saya nak tanya Prof. Uh, kalau dia macam ni, dia isu dekat kita construction ni. Aha. Kita nak buat pemantauan uh, underwater. Ah, betul? Pemantauan satu dari segi kita punya construction dan satu lagi dari segi uh, dia punya maintenance. Ah, betul? Ada chance tak? Uh, yang teknologi yang Prof ada ni tak tak, so, uh, construction masuk construction apa? Uh, uh, bridge macam ni lah kita nak buat construction bridge construction satu dari sini kita nak buat pemantauan dia boleh? contoh Cont- lah dia isu isu biasanya isu dekat construction uh, under 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 water isu kita nak concreting itu satu isu oh, kita oh, nak oh, sure oh. Uh, all oh. the issue lah kalau kita boleh guna sistem teknologi yang macam tu lah Ya memang ada, contohnya biasa kita akan buat uh, acoustic imaging 
Contohnya bila kita normally kita belum sebelum kita buat research yang kita akan buat seabed mapping, uh, location mapping kan nak tengok macam mana keadaan dia. Kita buat bottom profilers nak tahu layers so bottom profiling sensor ni um, imager ni kita tahu contoh how thick is the mud, what is the thickness of the mud, uh, layer lupuk, how thick is the sand. Ah uh, kita tak kita boleh buat tu. Itu memang ada tools lah untuk kita buat mapping. Macam kita nak buat piling dekat satu kawasan kan. Kita nak tahu how thick is uh, the mud layer. Uh, sand layer, rock layer. Ah uh, dari situ baru kita tahu how, how apa ni? Berapa besar, berapa uh, kuat ataupun how many poles you want to kena construct lah satu. Kedua, bila kita dah construct, we can use again a different acoustic imaging to measure what are the condition of the structure. Kadang-kadang kita kita buat construction tu dia tak edit macam sebab tak nampak kan sebab dia dia normally very bila construction area dekat beri environment ni air dia very murky, dia tak nampak pun you tak boleh uh, so you need an uh, acoustic based mapping lah so itu memang ada lah pros apa boleh, boleh memang, kalau ada boleh tahu lah saya boleh bantu lah contoh lah saya interested on yang acoustic tu lah prof nanti saya akan carilah dengan team saya saya bagi contoh satu contoh macam kat kedah, kedah lah kedah dia buat sand mining kan dekat sungai kan kan dia buat uh, ambil okay, pasir okay. Uh, bila dia ambil pasir Uh, normally uh, kerajaan negeri dia akan kata you tak boleh dia ada syarat tak dalam uh, kanun atas tanah you cannot correct uh, you can <laughs> kita tak boleh korek dasar tu lebih daripada let's say 5 meter 6 meter untuk dia tak boleh sebab dari sungai tu tak dalam sangat kan tapi masalahnya bila this, this people yang buat sand mining dia ni dia korek mana kita nak tahu sebab air keruh kan kita mana nak tahu berapa dalam dia korek kan So normally what happen is that kita cuma, pihak berkuasa cuma tahu dia telah korek terlalu dalam bila uh, uh, apa ni, tebing sungai tu jatuh. Bila tebing tu, sungai tu jatuh maknanya sungai dia terlalu dalam lah, dia korek terlalu dalam. Jadi sebab tu dalam konteks soalan tu, saya, saya kita pernah propose dekat GPS Kedah lah. Kalau punya acoustic mapping, kita tahu dah dia, ah, tu contoh lah, contoh dia real problem yang kita boleh solve cheaply, secara murah dan cepat lah. Kalau tak dia kena panggil lane surveyor sebagainya. So macam soalan contoh yang Prof Safa sebut tu boleh selesai lah. Tak ada isu sangat. Boleh selesai lah. Boleh Prof. Ini lebih kepada pemantauan kan? Ah, pemantauan. Ah, betul, betul. Tapi memang yeah, banyaklah peluang kalau topik lah. Tapi macam saya kata tadi, we must start from the real problem lah. Then we work backward. Ah, the solution. Yes, ah, macam tu lah. Baik, baik. Terima kasih Prof. Okay, terima kasih Prof. Okay. Any question ada? Hello. Okay, good bro. Okay, tak apa saya saya open tu kalau ada yang di kalangan tuan dan puan yang klik uh, yang rasa saya ada part yang saya boleh bantu, tolong kontak nanti saya akan cuba bantu lah bagi pandangan lah sebab I think for bila kata marine ni, uh, dia bukan laut je, dia tasik, sungai, uh, tangki air, apa-apa yang air lah uh, kita boleh bantu sebab teknologi lebih kurang je sebab cuma beza fresh water, salt water tu je beza dia dan kedalaman dia so I'm always open to if you need my feedback sebagainya okay, lah terima kasih lah pada kita lebih Ah, okay. okay. So I think that's all. Okay. Uh, thank okay. You, thank, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Uh, for so, your sharing today. Doctor Rashidi, if if anybody yeah. wants that, that want to uh, you want a copy of the slide, nanti you email saya bagi lah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye, Prof. Terima kasih. Selamat tinggal semua. Selamat things and uh, that's all from webinar today till that uh, thank you for your time and participation so our next uh, professor talk sharing on 30 13 september eh, sorry 30 of october by professor dr prabakaran pupalan okay uh, till that i think that's all thank you for your time and uh, we meet again for next uh, webinar maybe you can turn on your webcam lah boleh lah untuk Uh, screenshot ni lah ni <laughs>